The hugeness of the reef, the incredible variety of its life, have provided us with a program for years of continuing research. Over my lifetime, what one felt was an open-ended world. There was masses of stuff to learn. It's changed radically. Unless we realize that we're screwing up, we're going to have a very devastated planet to live on. I'm Frank Talbot. I was born in South Africa and brought up in Cape Town. It was a, a lovely youth. And my mother used to take me to the seaside. I became fascinated by the things that grew in the half-tide pools, the fish particularly. I did reasonably well at school, got into the university, and I did a master's degree there, and later a PhD. Applied for a job at the Australian Museum here. And I got the job. After about six months, I thought, you know, I'm not going to leave this country. It's a, we were so welcomed in, in Australia. I eventually became director of the Australian Museum, and uh, we worked on a research project start a research station. My name's Frank Talbot. I'm interested in the biological problems of coral reef. I found an American who shared enthusiasm for research and science and went up and found an, an island. We chartered a boat and we went out to Lizard Island. It was quite rough on the way, but I, I'm a bit of a sailor too, so it wasn't a problem. And I cooked the dinner because the captain said it was far too rough to cook. And I said, I'm sorry, we're going to have dinner because we brought some good red wine. And the American gave us $100,000 to help start. Between Frank and Henry, the Lizard got established. Well, I was very lucky to, to be on their very first expedition to Lizard Island with Frank Talbot. And it was fabulous, it was fabulous. It was my first time diving on a reef. You had to help yourself, uh, and there were, there were you know, cooking tents. Things were supplied, but it was you know, basically fairly primitive, but very functional. Even in those very early days when we slept in tents and we worked outside, it was all about doing science. The first 50 years have been extraordinary, and I've been there for two thirds of them I worked out the other day. That's massive. Um, yeah, it's, it's changed from an island that didn't have any permanent habitation to an island that's now world renowned. Hundreds of people annually come to this place to work in the reef, working to understand how this ecosystem works. How does it work? What makes it tick? People learn from each other and pick up things from each other. And at Lizard you could be mixing with someone who's working on sand grains and someone else is working on current and someone else is working on the noise profile. And, and it, that's one of the marvellous things is to mix with other people and immerse yourself in science. Because of the volume of researchers that visit and then the quality of research projects that they host, you would struggle to find another research station in the world that publishes as many scientific research papers per year and, and ones that are high impact. The reefs are changing really quickly because of the things that we're doing to the planet and so that has actually changed the direction of the research quite a bit. Now there's still an awful amount of basic knowledge that we need to find out about coral reefs but all those projects now have a twist. Well okay we're looking into how this affects that but how's it going to change with climate change? Think about this like in a place like Little Island Research Station the research has been done for 50 years and uh, even in such a well, like a well-studied place you can describe new and new species. Taxonomy really is the fundamental and the, the, the foundation for all conservation work. You cannot conserve something or protect something that you don't know exists. Until you actually put a name to something, that thing is invisible to the world. There's only one home that we live on and if we don't protect our oceans, you know, who else is going to do it? Frank retired a long time ago um, before I started at the museum, but as a collection manager, I get to see who contributed hugely to you know, our understanding of um, fishes. In terms of his importance, there's three species of fishes named after Frank. One of them I did bring to show you. Um, here we have 
the holotype of uh, Chrysiptera talbotii, which is um, Talbot stem cell. So beautiful little damselfish found um, uh, not only on the Great Barrier Reef, but on, in the greater Indo-Pacific. Most scientific studies unfold over a series of days, weeks, or months. What makes a field station like Lizard Island unique is that it draws upon years and even decades of research. And it's hard to come by in the world of science. It's even harder to come by in the richest natural ecosystems that we have on this planet. On rainforests on land and on coral reefs in the ocean. It connects me also to a vision of our past director, Frank Talbot, who did so many incredible things in advancing this museum in his time. Back then, maybe no one thought one of the most important would be the founding in 1973 of the Lizard Island Research Station. He had an incredible vision. He didn't know what would happen there, but he knew if he picked a good place, that that would last and that would create a legacy of study and data that would allow us to understand the reef better than we'd ever be able to do otherwise. Change in science has been enormous. We now know what we are doing and what we have done. Communication of science, getting across what science does, what it is, how it can help, that's vital. And the museum plays an enormously good and important role in this even perhaps more key than it was when I was young in helping mankind. Australian museum scientists and the literally thousands of scientists from around the world who have conducted research on Lizard Island tell the story that Frank Talbot started 50 years ago. But Frank's contribution to marine science in the museum sector goes way beyond the Lizard Island Research Station. Frank is a leader, a mentor and a role model. With a career in universities and museums from the AM to the Cal Academy of Sciences and then as the director of the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History in Washington DC, Frank has always broken new ground. Australia, the Great Barrier Reef and Lizard Island really owe him.